Now, let's talk about banking curve. So, what is really banking? When we say banking, okay, so when you say banking load, meaning that it's a curve, it's a load where you have got a curve, okay? So, now, that banking curve is the same as, in other words, we can say it is more like an incline, okay? More like an incline, and then this is what we're going to have. So, so we know that under incline, we are going to have what we are going to call theta at this point. Okay. So if this is our theta, then let's assume to say we have got a car at this point. So this is our car. Now, what I want us to understand is uh, when we talk of a banking load, this is how it looks. So like this is the load it is going there so it's more like it is caving it's making a circle so now what is happening there is that from the center of the load or the way to where an object is or where the car is we can call it as radius okay and then the car will be moving there and I banked level. Now, this distance here, it is the outside distance. Now, that is the distance which is going to determine or which is going to tell us to say um, if we increase this edge, meaning an object will not, will not be stable under a banked curve, but if we reduce the edge, meaning a car is going to be stable uh, on what? Banking load. Okay. So now, what is happening there is that we know that at this instance this guy is going to have this car the surface is going to exert what the normal um the weight force so we can say that we are going to have the weight force in this direction then the normal force the surface is going to exert the normal force which is going to be in this direction okay so that is our normal force which we are going to call it as n so now, as you can see, for this normal force to support the mg, meaning it's going to have the x component as well as the y component. So we're going to have this component here, which is going up, which we can call it as ny. Then there's another component, which is x component, we can call it any x. So now, according to the rules here, this theta which is going to be formed here is the same as the theta which is going to be formed there. Okay. Now, this situation we are going to talk about it is without friction. So without friction, at what speed or what max or minimum or maybe maximum speed? Okay, in short, our goal is to find the velocity. The formula which is going to help us to find the velocity at which this car can move under a bank load. Okay, so now we can get this one. In terms of Sokatoa, we can say that this n is going to be, if we say nx is going to be equal to n sine theta. Okay? What of our ny? Our ny is going to be, as you can see, it's going to be so, uh, cos. It's going to be n cos theta. Okay? Now, what we're going to do here, as we can see, this car is moving in x direction, meaning that in y direction you don't have any motion therefore the forces in y direction we are supposed to get zero so what we are going to do here is this what are the forces in uh, in y direction which we have we have got ny which is pointing up so we are going to get it as positive so we have got ny minus this mg i'm going to get negative because it's going down so i'm going to have this has to be equal to zero now I can replace where this ny with the n cos theta. So I'm going to say this is going to be n cos theta minus mg has to be equal to zero. I can shift mg to the other side. Then I'm going to have n cos theta has to be equal to mg. Okay. Now let's call this one as equation one. What about the uh, the motion in x direction? As we can see, we have got it this 
uh, the uh, the x component of the normal force which is moving to uh, where the the car is moving okay meaning that that is the force we can say that that component is the one which provides us what the centripetal force okay when an object is moving around the circle there is always centripetal force so what we are going to do is we are going to say that the forces in the x direction they're not going to have we are not going to to get zero here because an object is moving we're going to have the acceleration now acceleration in x direction now the acceleration in x direction is going to be the centripetal acceleration so we are going to say that what forces do we have in x direction we only have the x component of the normal force which is the nx has to be equal to so this acceleration is the normal or is the centripetal acceleration Okay, then now n x we can put n as what n sine theta has to be equal to Acce uh, centripetal acceleration is given by v squared divided by r. So the r which we are talking about here is the same this r o. I can represent that r with the capital r. Okay, so now what we are going to do in this case we are going to call this one as our equation what our equation. Two. Now, what we can see here, guys, is that we have got n in this equation as well as n in the first equation. So let's try to eliminate n. Now, in the first equation, let's divide both sides by cos for us to eliminate to make n a subjective formula. Okay. So what we are going to do here, we are going to say that we have got n. Let's let's use different color. We have got n cos theta has to be equal to mg. We are going to divide both sides by cos theta, even here by cos theta, meaning that our n is going to be equal to mg cos theta over cos theta. Now, what you are going to do here is the, this. The n which we are talking about in this equation, equation 2, is the same as the n which we have here. So, what we are going to do now is we are going to replace mg over cos theta we see the n which we have in that equation. Okay. Now, when we replace there, what are we going to get? So this is what we're going to have. We replace there, we're going to have mg divided by cos theta times sine theta has to be equal to mv squared divided by r. So as you can see, if I say sine divided by cos, we are going to get tan theta. So we're going to have mg tan theta has to be equal to mv squared divided by r. So we are talking about the same car, which, meaning that the mass which we are talking about is the same. We can cancel the mass. Therefore, we are going to have our equation which is going to be uh, g tan theta is going to be equal to v squared divided by r. Now, our goal is to find, our goal is to find what? Our goal is to find uh, the velocity. So we can just make velocity as the subject of formula and then let's see what we are going to have. So what we are going to have there, if we cross multiply, we are going to have v squared is going to be equal to rg tan theta. So we get the square root to both sides, then we are going to get v is going to be equal to the square root of rg tan theta, meaning this is the velocity at which this car is going to be moving with in this instance. So that is the formula which you are supposed to drive for velocity. But now, the trick part is this. Sometimes we need to know the height at which this car can move without slipping. So now I'm talking about this, the maximum height. Okay? Now, let's think about this. Um, let's think about this. If we are to increase the value of h, meaning that the theta is going to increase, okay? So now I'm going to teach you two methods. So now, if the theta is too small, meaning that this h is going to be too small as well, therefore, this object will not fall down. It will move under a bank load. Now, we're talking about this. If I increase, if we increase the theta, if we increase the theta, this is what is going to have to happen meaning this h is going to increase okay if we increase theta meaning h is going to increase therefore it's going to be impossible for this car to move under a bank load 
But now, the question which they are going to ask you is this. We want this car to move under a bank loan. Therefore, they are going to ask us to calculate the minimum or maybe the maximum height. Okay. Now, they are going to give us the height for this load, this one, which we are going to call it as H. Okay. I'm talking about this part. They are going to, we are going to be given, so we are going to call it as D. Okay. So now, what I want us to think, to, to, to understand here is this. If this guy, if if this edge is going to be too small, meaning the theta is going to be too small as well. So if the theta, if we make the theta as to be too small, meaning that this, meaning if the theta is too small, meaning that uh, tan theta is approximately equal to sine theta. Okay. You can even punch if you, maybe let's, let's assume to say the theta is too small. Let's assume to say the theta is 5. So if the theta is 5, 5 degrees, if you punch tan 5 as well as sine 5, you are going to get the same answer. So if this is true, we know that sine theta is going to be opposite. So we have agreed that this, this part from this, we are going to be given this distance of the load. Let's call it as D. So if we have been given that one as D, then we know that sine theta is going to be opposite which is h over the hypotenuse which is d therefore i can replace where where we're going to have tan theta at this instance because at this point this equation after driving it we came up with this came up with this we came up with the uh, g this point i'm getting it from this point tan theta is equal to v squared divided by r okay so now we are going to be given the the velocity at this instant now we want to make tan theta as a bit of formula then we are going to say that we are going to do two times one over g even here one over g meaning that the g and g will cancel here so we're going to have tan theta is going to be equal to v squared divided by r g now we are saying that tan theta if the theta is too small then tan theta is going to be approximately equal to a sine theta then i can replace this one with sine theta okay now our goal is to find the h now we know that sine theta is going to be equal to h over d so i'm going to replace the h divided by d has to be equal to v squared divided by r g our goal is to find h so we're going to say we cross multiply we're going to have h is going to be equal to d v times v squared divided by r g so this is the formula which we can use to find out what to find um to find what the h but at the same time we need also to understand that we can use another method maybe this one is going to be simple for you we can say that since we are talking about if you are going to be given the velocity we have come up with this formula that was g tan theta was equal to v squared divided by r so let's find uh, we, we make g tan a subject of formula so we're going to have tan theta is going to be equal to if i do the math here i'm going to get v squared divided by rg so now i can find theta which is going to be theta is going to be equal to tan inverse then we're going to have v squared divided by rg okay so now as you can see if i find the theta here meaning that this theta is going to help me to find the what if if this is the theta which we're talking about okay so now this theta is going to help me to find what the h because if i have the theta here Okay, we have agreed that this theta which we are going to find here is the same as the theta which is going to be there. So this theta is going to help us to find the h because we can say that sine theta is going to be equal to h divided by d. The d we are going to be given, but our goal is to find the h. So we are going to cross multiply and we are going to have h is going to be equal to d sine theta. Now the theta is the one which you have already found there. So there is nothing difficult here. Thank you for watching this video.